My name is uh, Jim Cook. For those of you who don't know me, in the 4,000 reposers. <laughs> I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight to the what is now our sixth annual uh, Hall of Fame banquet to honor former athletes, uh, teams, and supporters of the program. And it's a special night for many people. So we want to make it as well, as well done as we can. We also, a couple of years ago, when a certain individual I won't mention talked for like an hour and a half, uh, we tried to streamline our program a little bit, so we ask when you come up to either introduce a person or accept an award, uh, just keep your comments to, you know, a minute and a half. <laughs> I want to, before we get started, I also want to thank some people that are very important to this, uh, this group. Um, sponsors, we have uh, what we call them, we have maroon, gold, and white. Uh, the maroon sponsors are the ones that come through with the, the big bucks. And uh, Video Auto Group, which has been with us since day one, is a maroon sponsor and locally we have picked up the uh, local union number 51 as a, a big time sponsor and the Tiverton uh, Casino and Hotel uh, this year. Um, we also have, if you look in your book, you're going to see full page ads and those are our gold and our white and that's uh, Pirate Cove Marina, Thrive Coffee House, uh, the Raposa Family, Eddie Cox, uh, an inductee in 2016, and Towers Insurance. Beside that, you'll see a lot of half-page ads, quarter-page ads, and all that is necessary for us to uh, do what we do here for the athletes and for tonight. Special thank you to McGovern's Restaurant. This is our sixth year, and that's our sixth year here. And they've been great. Um, McGovern's are uh, part of Tiverton Athletics. And coming here is like coming home. Paul's Press does the booklet. Been doing the booklet since day one. Uh, JL Trophies uh, for, the, for the awards. I want to thank all of those three, and the uh, Tiran Athletic Booster Club, which we are a part of. Um, special thanks out to that group. There's a committee, I just happen to be the guy in charge now for the last two years. And this is the sixth year, and it started with uh, Jerry Aqua doing it for two years, and then Steve Lake taking it over for two years, and I've been the uh, chairman or president of Gumbaya for the last two years, and I'm going to hand it off next year for two years to Ellie Raposa Byrne, who will be the coming and taking my place. If you look in your booklet on the second page, there's an al also some information about how to nominate uh, people. And you can go in there on the website and you can find all kinds of information on our website. Past inductees, the history, how to do it, how to fill out forms. We have a post office box, it's right there. So before you go home tonight, take one of the booklets with you. And uh, there's a lot of deserving athletes as you can tell by the past six years, but we all oh, we need to have a constant flow of qualified athletes and teams and support is nominated so we can bring recognition to them too. When you walked in, I hope you had time to stop at the memorabilia tables that are in the back. 
and uh, there's a ton of stuff there. Um, I thought I saw my uh, coaching jacket from 1978 that was stolen. I think I saw that up on the, <laughs> the board up there. I don't know who might have taken that. But, uh, <laughs> This is being videoed by my boy Steve Rice. It serves a good round. And the committee that is put together is 11 people. I'm not going to go through their names, but they've been fantastic. Six or seven of them are currently teaching or coaching at the high school. And then there's a couple of people like uh, Coach Andy Anderson and myself that coached way back in the, the early days of the school. So there's a lot of input from a lot of people that were here coaching and playing and the current people. So the committee you know, got a lot to be proud of and they did a great job, I think, this year. So. This is not part of the program, but we've never done this before, but if there is someone here that either played on a team that was inducted or has been inducted in the five previous years, would you stand? and taken <laughs> past inductees. Thank you. Uh, when this is over, uh, a lot of people are going to be wanting to get together for photos and we'd like to get a group photo of the inductees and stuff like that, so don't run out of here too quick. So. Okay, enough for me. I got some good stories, you know. The first inductee tonight will be 1975 uh, Richard Smith, and he's going to be introduced by Peter Raposa. So come on up here, guys. Good evening. I'm Peter Raposa, graduate of 1975, Divin High School, with my friend here, Dick Smith. And I'd like to say it's a privilege and an honor to be here tonight to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Dick was an exceptional scholar, athlete, excelled in football, baseball, basketball, but most of all, he was a best friend. From first grade till now, you could always count on him 24-7. He went off to school, went to PC, we visited each other a lot during college, and then went off to Georgetown. Everybody knows after that, became a doc and served in the Navy, but uh, just a great guy. I, I would have to say that probably, I wouldn't want to hedge my bets, but probably 50% of those people in this room have either been operated on him or been in his, in his office. <laughs> You know, also, he's a dad of three amazing kids, as in the journal says that, uh, you know, Garrett, Maura, and, Car and um, Carter. And uh, I know he did a great job, was always there as a dad, a coach, best friend. And uh, I know he's very proud of them. They were all on their own and doing well. Um, last but not least, I'm, I'm really happy to find it. Dick found his life partner, good golf buddy, best friend, Mary Ann. I still don't know how he convinced you to marry him. <laughs> Without further ado, Dr. Richard Smith. I'm on the clock, so you really have to sit down. And go. I, I was actually very worried about what Peter would say. Um, if, if anybody knows Peter, his, his name isn't really Peter, it's Fritz. So for those of you who are unsure who he was, it's Fritz. Uh, he has a lot of uh, stories about me and evidence against me. So uh, he, he could have used it. He, he was gracious enough not to use it. You know, For someone who's been 
eating crayons and sniffing wood glue his whole life. I think he did a great job. So I have to say he did a great job. <laughs> but no, no, in, in all seriousness, this is it's great honor. Thank you. Um, first, of course, I want to congratulate the other inductees of the Hall of Fame. Um, also, like to thank the members of the Hall of Fame for their remembering me since it's been so long. And as they get older, sometimes their memory lapses a little bit too. Um, I, I really feel uh, I'm not sure if I was. This was wholly unexpected. I'm not sure I'm worthy of the honor, but I'm not here to argue the point. So again, thank you very much. Um, looking back, I have to thank all my coaches, teammates, friends, and families for their enduring support. Uh, the sports seed was planted early in our old neighborhood, uh, growing up in Tiverton in the old Stone Ridge area. Uh, I remember families and friends that made it so great. Um, my first Little League coach uh, was Donald Lake, and his uh, assistant was Russ Towers. Not this Russ Towers, but Russ's dad. Um, it just what a, what a sports pedigree to start with there. Uh, had Mr. Welchman as a coach, Prescott Peckin as a coach. So they were just, just wonderful people, great role models as I remember them. Um, uh, it, we lived in that Stone Ridge area across from Fort Barton, so uh, we'd have pickup games, whether it was whatever season it was, whether it was football, basketball, or baseball season. It didn't matter. Um, Peter and I would go up and uh, watch the big kids play. The big kids at the time were you know, Steve Lake and Bo, uh, David Raposa, Russ Towers, and, and the best player of all was uh, Kathy Murphy. And, uh, <laughs> Kathy, not only did Kathy have a tremendous backhand, and, and did she, and she could rip a line drive down the third base line, she could trash talk like no sister <laughs> ever had in the world. So, and she would trash talk with the, all these Hall of Famers, and she was a great role model for us. And we didn't know it at the time, but she was great. I mean, before, think about it, before they had Title IX, before they had integrated sports, we had Kathy Murphy. And so she was playing with us way back in the 70s. And they, and they were just great people. The, the example was practice, work hard, you know, and behave to a certain point. <laughs> we were able, and we were able to do this year round. It was, it was so much fun. I remember pick up football games at you know, Pete Humphrey's house or behind Stone Bridge or where we'd play 10 on 10. We had a pickup game once, 20 kids showed up. So it, was, it wasn't like the parents brought them, they just showed up in the neighborhood. And we'd keep playing until either the street lights came on or the parents yelled or two or three people had to go and that broke up the game, but we'd pick it up again next week. So I remember shoveling driveways so we could play basketball with Clay, Clay and you know, all his friends. And, and it was just, uh, we were fortunate at the time. It was a great neighborhood. Um, we played together as kids, and for most of us, we were able to play again, even in high school. And I think that that really is, um, you know, is a point of all that in the sense that we were friends as kids, friends as in high school, and friends, you know, lifelong. And that was probably the most most important thing for me. So you passed two minutes. <laughs> you the clock. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I gave the commencement address in 14 and a half minutes, so I think I, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so my point is I want, I want to remember the families that, that contributed to mine and, and our team's successes. Um, and really, they, they form the, the human fabric and legacy of, of Tiffany Sports and certainly uh, my life as well. Uh, I, I particularly uh, remember the Cleary brothers, you know, John and Mike. I remember. Uh, John was playing middle linebacker. We played Portsmouth. We beat Portsmouth two years in a row, by the way, when, I, when we played. Uh, John broke his wrist uh, in like the first quarter of the game. He taped it up and played like Ray Nitschke the rest of the game. Uh, no questions asked. Great, great guy. Um, Billy uh, and, and Jimmy St. Laurent, you know, next to Kenny Prue, Billy had the biggest rear end we could run behind. So I was very happy to run behind someone like that. Um, and the Raposas, of course, whether what clan, whether it was from Evans Avenue or Highland Road or Farnsworth Avenue, you weren't sure, but like a bad virus, they, they, they were everywhere and they continued to, to spread just like that type of biological organism. So um, I thought I'd throw my science into that. So, but, but, you know, great family, great legacy. Um, the McGlynn's, great, great athletes. The, the O'Neills, the Ibbotsons, the Dorans. I only throw the Dorans in there, Bo just because um, they had a nurturing and an innocent, corrupting fabric about their lives. And, you know, next to Kathy Murphy, I remember them particularly well. Something about underage drinking, but don't, don't, take, me, don't take that the wrong way. But, but uh, you know, the Crapos, the, how about, you know, Kevin Crapo, Keith Crapo, Sylvia Crapo. 
I mean, who can, who can forget Sylvia? Uh, but all that is part of the family that, that contributed so much to our experience. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was rich, it was wonderful, it was safe, it was nurturing. Um, and and I, I've traveled all over, as Peter said, between college and med school and training and, and being in the Navy and overseas. And, but you know, most of my friends and my best friends are, are here at town. And, and so this is, this is um, sort of in my lifeblood. This is where I am and this is where I'll stay. Uh, finally, in closing, I have to thank my family, um, you know, for being there, whether they wanted to be there or not. Um, they were there. My older brother Jack, uh, Jack sort of paved the way. You know, years ago, Jack was the first one. So, if I wanted to get on a team. I got on his little league team. I got on his basketball team. I got on his basketball team, and so that's how it, it went along the way. Um, and so I followed in his footsteps everywhere we went. Followed after college, I even followed him in med school, I even followed him in training. He was actually my surgical mentor when I was in surgical training. They would say, Dr. Smith, what's the answer to that? And he would turn and say, you mean the young Dr. Smith? <laughs> and I'd always get stuck asking these ridiculous questions. It was, it was terrible. But I'll, uh, I, I thank him for that. Um, but I remember one particularly, w one episode, we were playing baseball, and, and uh, the late Henry Etwistle, who was our great coach, he used to like to take his fungo bat, <clears throat> and he would have uh, he would drive um, hard liners at us from you know for infield practice. So we'd hit one to the third base, shortstop, uh, second base, and back to first. And we'd pick it up, throw it to first, throw it back to to Peter, the catcher. And so uh, it was going on one day where he got his fungo bat. He drilled one at Pete Humphrey, who was playing third. Pete picked it up, threw it to my brother Jack at first. Jack turned, threw it home, and at that moment, of course, you know, Henry hits one at me, hit me to my right, I went over two steps, picked it up, and I picked it up and I just threw it as hard as I could. Now, I threw a missile at first. It's like the best throw I've ever had. This thing had, like, vapor behind it. It was just <laughs> sailing to, to first base. And at the moment, Jack had just released the ball to Henry, or to Peter, uh, got back, retreated back to the base, put his glove up, it was too late. Hit him right in the side of the head. Oh. My brother goes down like this. Boom! Now, this all happened in about you know 50 milliseconds, but I'm thinking of this as like it's happening over 10 minutes. I'm looking at him and said, I think I just killed my brother. <laughs> went down. As quick as he went down, like Tigger, boom, popped back up. Picks the ball up, throws it to home plate, looks at me, goes, I'm gonna kill you when we get home. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, thank God you're alive. <laughs> so I thought I, I thought I actually, I said, my mother's going to kill me. I just killed my brother. But, but uh, so thank you, Jack. I uh, love you doing that. Love you for taking my hit. Um, my sister Ann, I call Ann my reluctant cheerleader. Uh, growing up with three brothers uh, was particularly difficult, yet she remained steadfastly supportive. Uh, and lastly, of course, the, the uh, someone who grew up with, the only child in our family was Chris, a.k.a. Critter. Um, when we left high school and other, other parts of life, we set the bar pretty high. Christian came along, put one hand on it, and jumped over it. Um, and so, thanks for being there in body and spirit. Love you guys. Uh, and uh, as was once said, uh, the only ones who truly know my story are the ones who helped write it. So, to all my co-authors, thank you for a wonderful life. Dr. Dickey. He did a knee operation on me. It took less time than he just talked. What I got paid wasn't worth it. Moving along. I apologize for the half hour speech. You know. No problem. Lynn Mata Nicholas, 1979. Come on up here, Lynn. And Elaine Ferreira, Hall of Fame coach, to introduce her. First of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the shoes inductees uh, for a job well done. You deserve it. Be proud. Um, it is an honor. Oops. 
to be able to introduce Lynn to this year's Hall of Fame. Lynn was in a unique position. Lynn's not that much younger than I am. And so she came up through Tivenin with no uniforms, or uh, maybe a shirt here and there from the guys' baseball team or whatever. But anyway, Lynn started her career at Tivenin High School in the seventh grade when it was a junior senior high school. Uh, coach Mary Lou Clark, who coached basketball and softball, uh, convinced the powers that be that even though we were junior senior high school, we needed some type of a feeder system. So what she did was she convinced them to allow us to have a JV team. And the kids were able to play certain teams within the, within the, the state of Rhode Island. And that's where Lynn started her career as a seventh grade student. So it doesn't fall too far from the tree that she excelled when she was on the high school level. She played basketball, she played field hockey, and she played softball, and she did excel, earning all division honors, all state honors in all three sports. She was the high school's um, athlete of the year. In her senior year, she captained many of her sports. She was also a scholastic in her um, senior year, and she was uh, the athlete of the year, as I said before. Um, a standout athlete in the three sports, she proved that hard work and dedication equaled success, and she's doing that today as a guidance counselor at the high school. Lynn never, ever said that that's the best I can do. She always said I could do better, and it proves that in her life now. Um, as, a, as In field hockey, she was one of the league's top goaltenders. She earned all division and all state honors there. And as a softball player, she was a standout player as a catcher and a pitcher. They played slow pitch, I believe, at the time. Lynn's career for Tivenin did not end on the field as, a, as an athlete, but she came back and she coached with me for four or five years on the field hockey team. And she did a great job with, with that. It is with great pleasure to announce Lynn Mata Nicholas as a member to the High School Hall of Fame Class of 2018. I appreciate that. Jimmy, you made it worse. I paid Elaine good money to say those nice things about me. <laughs> um, and you, Jimmy, you made, me, you made me follow Dickie Smith. Are you kidding me? <laughs> One, I have not operated on anybody recently. And uh, I did not grow up in the Stone Bridge area. I was a North Ender, and I'm proud of that. <laughs> Um, I'm truly honored to be a part of such an amazing group of individuals being inducted tonight. Um, not only are they great athletes, but you are intelligent, productive, and, and extraordinary individuals. I, I mean that from my heart. Um, individuals that continue to give back to your community and family in positive ways. You are college graduates with degrees in math, computer science, engineering, psychology, horticulture, and turf management and education. You have served in the armed forces and continue to support our veterans, your sales representatives, singers, teachers, business owners, engineers, doctors, mothers, fathers, husbands, and wives. All of us who were brought up in the community of Tiverton have been influenced by our parents and all our teachers and coaches. This is why we are, we are the people we are today. I truly believe that. Like uh, Dickie had talked about, that community uh, and neighborhood spirit, we all have it. I'm proud to be a part of this community where I continue to work and live. I'm equally proud to be part of such an amazing group of individuals that are being inducted tonight the as the class of 2018. You should all be very proud of yourselves and all of your accomplishments. I would like to thank a few people tonight, my family that's here. I truly appreciate you being here, my brothers, my sister-in-law, my beautiful nieces, um, especially my mom. and. I never knew what moms did until I became a mom. And the toughest job I have ever had is being a mom. And my mom brought up five children. She dragged me back and forth to all my practices and games. And um, her and my dad taught us about working hard. Work ethic is just, that was my dad's middle name. Um, and giving back to our community. So I appreciate everything you've done for me, mom. Um, my son, the love of my life, could not be here. Um, he's uh, studying in New Hampshire. He's in New Hampshire, so when I'm paying for tuition, I told him to stay there and study and not be here. But um, he's with me in spirit. 
uh, my better half, Douglas Lake. I'm letting him believe that he's my better half tonight. <laughs> I appreciate your support. Um, he's not always the most patient person. His, his family can attest to that. Um, but he's always patient with me because I can be a handful at times. Um, and he just is a calming factor in my life and I appreciate your support, Douglas. Um, his daughter, Allie, is here too. Thank you for coming, Allie. It means a lot for me to be here. Uh, the Lake family, they've always been very uh, supportive of Tiverton Athletics um, for many, many years, and I appreciate your support. My good friends Nancy and Carl are new grandparents. You always have my back. Thank you for being here. Um, and Elaine, of course, for, for all your support and laughs over the years. I appreciate all that. And last, last but not least, the Hall of Fame Committee. There's a great bunch of people on the Hall of Fame Committee that work really hard. Um, to put all this together, and I, I really appreciate it. I'm humbled um, by this honor. And I also want to acknowledge our new superintendent, uh, Peter Sanchioni's here with the school committee. I appreciate you being here and celebrating with us. And um, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evening. Thank you. Dickie. <laughs> Dickie bad, Lynn good. <laughs> well, we're out of the seventies. <laughs> you know, we move into the eighties, nineteen eighty. Scott Towers to be introduced by longtime friend Ken Walshman. You know, it's a great honor being here with Scott. Uh, I can remember the first day I met Scott. We were at the Cassette and I saw this big guy playing football and he had this butt ugly Notre Dame football from his brother Russ got him. It was a gold football, it was terrible. And from that day on, you know, we played everything together. I spent more, probably more time at the Towers house than my own house. Uh, Mrs. Towers wasn't very happy about that. But, uh, you know, when I think of Hall of Famers, I think of guys who were leaders, they were great teammates, and they also had an impact on their teams. And for those of you who don't know, Scott uh, went to Conley the first two years, and he came by in his junior year, and he came with the uh, 79 team. So the way the story goes is, we went up to Situate to play in the first half of the season where Scott couldn't play. So we went up there, Trader will tell you, Mac will tell you, we went up there. We lost 68 to 38. We got beat by 30 points by Situate. They were huge. It was like a volleyball game. They was just all over, all over the boards. Just did a job on us. And if you ever had to go on a bus with McDermott after a loss, it's not a fun time coming back. So we get to the second half, and you know Scott became eligible. But one thing you know about a Towers, same thing with Mark, is they do not like to practice. So I don't think Mr. Anderson knew what he was getting when he was getting Scott in that second half of the season. So we had the big game. We ended up beating Situate 47 to 45. Scott went for 12 points that game. That was a 32 point turnaround. And it wasn't just that Scott scored 32 points, because he didn't, he scored 12 points that game. But what he did was he made everybody better. And that's what a, a Hall of Famer, a good teammate, and a great basketball player does. You know, he allowed Mac to, you know, shoot from the outside more, they couldn't you know, collapse on him. Critter, Critter could do more from the outside, he didn't have to play underneath. You know, it was just a, it was such a great turnaround. And that year we went on to win the, uh, the state championship that year and Scott went out for 27 points in the, uh, in the finals. Next year he did the same thing. So, to me that's what a Hall of Famer is and that's what Scott is. So I want to do Scott right now. Thank you. I think this is where we make 
have some time. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, I want to thank you for introducing me to the Hall of Fame. You've been a friend since we were very little. I want to congratulate my fellow inductees as well. Um, I think I was six or seven years old when I went to my brother Russ's games at the high school. And then a few years after that, I went to my sister's games at the high school as well. It's hard to believe that it's been almost 50 years that we're standing here now together uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. At times I can still hear Mrs. Lake and my mom calling me, Scotty, your mom's looking for you. Scotty, it's time to go home. I can still hear that in some of my dreams, actually. I like to thank my coaches and teammates. Without them, I would not be standing here getting this award. Unfortunately, I could not attend last year's ceremony where our state championship basketball team was inducted. I want to make a shout out to my cousin Jimmy, the soccer guy. To get me in shape for basketball when I came back to Tiverton, he introduced me to this ridiculously strange game where you use your head and your feet. I still have nightmares. <laughs> I'd like to thank my family and friends for the support. Uh, my brothers and sister, all good athletes in their own right. Um, I believe we may be one of very few families um, actually in the country who have three siblings who won the male athlete or any, you know, the, the senior athlete award, um, which is a pretty good honor for my family. Um, I'd like to thank my wife of 28 years. She was a former Tiger cheerleader. Uh, in two months, she'll be two years cancer free. She deserves. an award more than I do. And my two boys, Aaron and Jacob, I'm proud of both of you. Uh, Jacob couldn't be here tonight. He's the athletic trainer for Portsmouth High School, which I know is forbidden by every bunch of people, but he is their athletic trainer and he had to be there for the games tonight. I want to thank my mom and dad for getting me started in sports at a very young age, uh, which is great because I was a very competitive child. It should have come with a warning, however, telling you that your body will start to break down and hurt as well at a much younger age as well. So my next shout out is to Tylenol and good bourbon whiskey. <laughs> In a few weeks, my mom will be 92 years old. Mamiachi call him, I love you in Polish. My dad was a great old school coach. It was said, he coached many of you and mentor. I really miss him. He used to always tell me as I was heading to my basketball games from when I was little to when I wasn't so little, playing defense doesn't get your name in the paper. <laughs> Dad, I listen to you very well. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Next inductee, Melanie Sumner Garant, to be introduced by, again, Coach Elaine Ferreira. Come on up, Mel. <laughs> I met Mel as a seventh grader at the middle school while I was teaching their physical education. At that point, I knew that we had a special athlete in her. Uh, she played three sports in high school, and she, she excelled in all three. In field hockey, she played four years varsity as a left wing. She could run faster than anybody else out there, and, and it showed. Uh, and she earned all division honors in her junior and senior year. In basketball, she played four years, three on varsity. 
an aggressive player. She never gave up. I used to call her my kamikaze kid. If there was a loose ball, you knew Mel would be at the bottom of the pile scrambling for it. Her abilities never went unnoticed as she earned all division in both junior and senior years. As a left fielder in softball, she played four years for, for the team, being on the 1981 championship run. As a senior, she won the school's most, most athletic award. It is with great pleasure to announce Melanie Sumner Grant for this year's 2018 Hall of Fame. Here. <laughs> How come you guys are so good? Lynn, you're a liar. <laughs> oh, I have to follow all of them. Um, first of all, thank you, Miss Miss Ferreira. Miss Ferreira. <laughs> thank you for that introduction. Thank you so much to the committee for voting me in. Uh, I can't believe I'm here. Um, congratulations to all the other inductees here tonight. Lynn Mata. I got to play with her. <laughs> I was uh, fortunate enough to play on a couple of teams with Lynn and um, learn from her. Dickie Smith. Dickie, where are you? <laughs> I got to watch him play alongside my brother um, in football. And he, um, he did a lot of our broken bones, my boys, all of their broken bones, and a few of my father's hips. <laughs> He stopped doing hips, so I had to get my hip done somewhere else. <laughs> now I lost my place. Oh God. Where am I? Scott Towers, I got to watch you play basketball and baseball. I went to as many Tiverton games as I possibly could. Um, playing for our teams and cheering for our teams was some of my best memories. Um, I probably learned my cheering from, I'm going to say, Mrs. Raposa. And my mom. Do you agree? And congratulations to the Reposes. Um, you'll get to hear later. Um, I'm sure she's here with us tonight. Um, I played with so many great female athletes in Tiverton. We always fought very hard. We were from a small town. Sometimes the scores were tough, but we fought to the last second. <laughs> I think my mother taught me how not to ever give up. Okay, another Hall of Famer here tonight um, was my brother-in-law who was here last year, Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, my whole family was here last year celebrating his um, induction uh, to the Hall of Fame. And who would have thought we'd be back here again? <laughs> you believe it? <laughs> All right, I'm almost done. I only have one more side. <laughs> Is that one minute? <laughs> under pressure. Okay, thank you to my coaches, Miss Ferreira, basketball, field hockey. Um, you led us to a great season. We had a tough time before you. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Cook took over our softball team, and I think he thought we were a bunch of babies, so he, tough he toughened us up. He didn't like the crying. <laughs> and he took us to our first playoff game, right? Championship. Right? Championship. Go, Tiverton! All right, I lost my place again. So you did toughen us, toughen us up a bit, right? You agree. And to Miss Mary Lou Clark, um, she's not able to be here with us. And she was like my main coach for mostly all the sports. And um, if she was here today, I'm sure she's here in spirit, I would say to her, thank you for believing in me. Okay, last, this is the tough part. Um, I'd like to thank my family. Okay, I'm gonna get through this. <laughs> my mom and dad especially. I believe I got my athletic abilities and my heart from both of them. <laughs> yeah. My dad, I'm sure you saw him running on the streets. Did anybody ever see my father? Dana's out there running on the streets. <laughs> I think he ran at every street in Tiverton. Uh, and he ran all over, everywhere, up mountains, across Rhode Island, everywhere. So I think some of our athletic abilities were from him. Um, where am I? I think I got my competitive spirit from my mother. Do you agree, Mom? 
uh, and they were my number one fans always from then until now. They still support me. They come out and see. I'm in a band, and they come out all the time to see me. My father's there till two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but uh, okay. So thank you, mom and dad, for a beautiful childhood. My husband, Mike, where are you? <laughs> of 27 years, uh, as of this September. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. He's crying now. Come on. He's a family man, he loves his family, and we got to raise two beautiful boys, uh, Mikey and Mitchell. Mikey's here, hi Mikey. Um, and I love you both. Um, they, my two boys, Mikey and Mitchell, they both excelled in their sports. Um, we spent many days and many hours at basketball games, baseball games, uh, and football was my favorite. Uh, we love football. Um, they took on their uncle, which is Mike Sumner, his number 22. They both had number 22 in their high school football. They played for Somerset, though, Somerset Berkeley. Um, so I had to change from a tiger to a raider, from maroon to blue. <laughs> but I still have maroon in my heart. Uh, did I get that? All right, I'm almost done. It's so great that I got to be with my husband, our boys, uh, to be the, their number one fans and be so involved in their sports. Um, my parents might argue with that. They might think that they're the number one <laughs> fans. And to all my other family here tonight, um, my other second mom and dad, Chris's mom and dad, um, we all suffered some great losses in the past couple of years. Um, you read that. <laughs> and I know for sure that um, all of our angels are here. Uh, my son Mitchell, Chris's daughter Trisha, uh, my uncle Bob, we have a lot of angels up there. Um, my son Mitchell had the number 22 as well. And um, they've retired his number at Somerset Berkeley. And I'll be doing fundraisers for the Somerset Berkeley football team in the future. We're going to be doing golf tournaments every year in August. So that's it. I don't know how to end this, but I love my family. Be grateful for your family. Love your family and appreciate them. Moving on, we got uh, Robbie Dennis, 1980-1992, to be inducted and introduced by Bobby Murray. Bust my chops anyway, so I've been used to that for a long time. Before I begin, um, there's been a lot of changes taking place over the years, but one of the constants is you guys. Like, and, I, and Dr. Stancioni is new to the facility, and I said to him about two weeks ago, I said, you need to come and meet our family. You need to be able to come in and see what we're all about and the type of people that live in this community that support our school that create the kids that we have and why we're so special. And I thought it was important that the first night that he come, he get to meet you. Because you guys are the ones that kind of set the tone for where we are today. So if by chance you have a chance tonight, I want you to say hello to him. I want you to shake his hand and I want you to welcome him to one of the best places in Rhode Island. And this place right here because of all of you. So Dr. Sanchione, welcome to Tim in Rhode Island. Welcome to a special place. I won't call you Peter, even though you want to be Peter. All right? And you are Dr. Sanchione. Thank you for coming.
in introducing Rob, um, you know, I've been in my office now for probably 40 years, and uh, I don't know if Rob remembers, but he sent me a card when he was in the service, when he was in a gas chamber, and he said, Coach, he said, this is a piece of cake, it's easy. I'm going to finish top of my class. He said, it's a lot like football, but it's easier. Well, to describe Rob Dennis, he came from a home with a mom who was really sick. And he was, when he was going through his four years at Tiverton, he dealt with that. He dealt with a dad that had to work all the time. Okay, and dad looked at athletics and said, you know, Rob, you could be doing this. And Rob went through that. Rob made a decision to go to Springfield, which I was extremely proud of, and then eventually made the decision to go into the service. We went to two Super Bowls. The first Super Bowl we won, we beat North Providence, and Rob and Andy were a major part of that success. But there was a, a guy that, in our second Super in our first Super Bowl when we won, there was a guy that kind of hung around when everything was over, and he represented what Rob represented, the pride of who we are. And it was Mr. Sinkowski. Everybody had left, and I was one of the last ones off the field. And Mrs. Mr. Sinkowski was waiting. He loved football. Sorry, Jim. He loved football. And when we, when we came up the path, I was one of the last ones left, and he was waiting for me. He shook my hand. He said, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you. And I said, no, don't be proud of me. Be proud of our kids, because our kids are what created this. And it was our first Super Bowl as a, as a school, and we won, and the kids were all excited. But it was that there's this history that exists. Well, Rob was all state. Rob was, Rob was a kid that went into a weight room, and he lifted when no one saw the work. He did all of those things you had to do to make yourself into somebody, and I'll disagree. I believe that defense gets your name in the paper because we won a championship because Rob played quality defense. He was an outstanding linebacker. He was a, a, an outstanding running back, but he was a tough, hard-nosed kid, and he's been extremely successful in life because he learned those lessons of hard work and how to be able to do what you have to to be successful. So for me to stand here tonight and be able to introduce Rob is like for me introducing all of you hard-working people that come into a community that take a great deal of pride in what we do, have never let it go, and have built on it so that the next group of people can be proud. And Rob, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Rob Dennis. Thank you so much. This is a, a tremendous honor. Um, when Andy called me, uh, it was a super exciting. He was calling me because, you know, as you, I've been away from home for 20 years, but as many of you have said before, you know, I always still call Tivert in my home. I come back all the time, and uh, some of my closest friends are still here today. Andy's been like a brother to me, so when he called me, I thought he was calling me up to maybe come visit. But uh, he's, he, had, he had a game to coach, so. <laughs> um, so I always like to uh, hear somebody's story, what they've gone through, uh, the person standing in front of you, you never knew who's standing in front of you, and uh, what they've gone through. So I'll get started. I'll keep it nice and short, Coach. <laughs> it's a great honor to be inducted into, the, into our high school hall of fame. We're all here due to our athletic accomplishments and our respect to sports, but I promise that I will not bore you with how we score touchdowns, hit home runs, or sunk putts. Instead, I want to take a few minutes to share how I was introduced to football and the immense impact this sport has had on my life. As a young boy in third grade, I remember my first experience with organized sports. It was a tryout for Little League Baseball on a cold, wet day, and I remember being worried because I hadn't really practiced much. Many of the kids already had a few years under their belt. My lack of practice wasn't because I didn't have the desire, but because my father was a single parent and also running a business. He didn't have time to practice, but I tried out regardless and made the team. Unfortunately, I never went to pra the practices because I couldn't get a ride. I can remember my buddies asking me where I've been and embarrassed to answer trustworthy. Truthfully, this was the same for basketball and football, the sports me and many boys in town were signed up to play. As years passed without a way to get to and from these activities, my only exposure to sports was playing with the neighborhood kids. 
But fortunately for me, it got pretty competitive in my neighborhood. In the spring, we played basketball or softball, and in the fall, it was football. With street hockey or basketball sprinkled in between. All the kids played together, old or young, strong or weak. It didn't matter, we just played. I eventually got back into baseball because of a close friend, Chris Braga, whose dad was the coach, who made sure he drafted all the neighborhood kids, regardless of our talent levels. He brought me to most of my practices and games, which was great for a kid in my situation. Chris also played Pop Warner football, and one day he showed me his scooter football equipment. And at that time, I had no idea there was football league for kids and had always thought you had to wait until you played high school football. I was immediately excited, since I had been playing football for years with the neighborhood kids, and at this point, I was running over and tackling the older and stronger kids. I asked my dad to bring me down to the middle school and sign me up. And on the first day of practice, I remember a player from Fall River who looked me up and down and said, you may be big, but I'm going to kick your butt in this drill. And I thought to myself, well, this is going to be a little different than the first time I signed up for organized sports. And I can honestly say that never happened in Pop Warner, high school, or college. And this memory stayed with me for years. Football has taught me so many lessons in life, such as perseverance, dedication, humility, and loyalty, to name a few. But none of this is possible without the dedicated coaches I've had. And at this time, I'd like to take a moment to thank Coach Murray, as he has been the single most influential person in my life. The time and dedication has devoted to raising young men in this town is remarkable. His unconditional love for his players has made a mark on so many of us. I'd also like to recognize Mr. Jack McKinnon Sr. for pulling me into his office each time I was in trouble to read me the riot act, which seemed like every day. And when he was finished yelling, we'd talk football and over time developed a strong relationship. And my visits to the office reduced significantly, significantly because I didn't want to disappoint him. Because of people like Coach Murray and McKinnon and many others, I choose to pursue a profession of coaching and teaching. And it is my hope along the way that I've had such an impact on the kids that I've coached. I've been blessed with a beautiful wife of 18 years, Lori, who's also a health and phys ed teacher for 20 years and a coach, who has given me three amazing children, Brady 14, Riley 11, and Reed 8, all who couldn't be with us tonight due to sports and school. Brady is a quarterback for his freshman team when he's not playing lacrosse and basketball. And daughter Riley plays field hockey and lacrosse, and hopefully we'll see her at UNC someday. And our youngest son, Reed, is my mini-me and loves football, lacrosse, and basketball. And again, thank you so much. This is an incredible honor. Thank you. Critter, is that that be for me, Critter? I'm done with it, Jim. <laughs> In 1994, Joshua Del Dale, to be introduced by his wife, Aileen. choose to describe my husband Josh, one of my favorite too. Over the years, Josh and I would run into a former athlete that he played against and he'd always say, I played that kid in high school. He was real good. Now, I know Josh had competed and won, but he would never mention that part. Tom Brokaw has written several books, one entitled The Greatest Generation. Now, I'm not comparing Josh to men who grew up in the Great Depression and went off to war. However, the title reminds me of Josh's generation of athletes. This was a time where if you missed one practice, you didn't play in the game that week. You had to earn your way on the field, and playing time wasn't equally distributed. This was a time for freshmen or sophomores like Josh to play on varsity because of sheer talent, drive, and fierce competitiveness. 
Simply put, if you could get the job done, you were put on the field and the playing team wasn't filled with equal time mediocrity. And athletes didn't even whine or complain about this. It was simply understood. A time where parents wouldn't dare to interfere with the coaching and subway meals weren't delivered to away games. Every trophy or plaque received, they earned. That meant something. Speaking of awards, our attic is filled with trophies, plaques, newspaper articles, you name it. However, I've often wondered what they were really for. Was it because Josh had impe impeccable athletic skills? Was it because he could read other players and anticipate and predict their next move? Or that he thrived on adrenaline? Or was it he was just a natural born athlete? I'm mentioning all of this to you because he never will. He'll never tell you that he played four sports, captained three teams his senior year, and played on Tiverton's only team to play Division I. Or that he had the most beautiful girlfriend in high school. <laughs> in my eyes, he made a small town like Tiverton great. He made them stand out. Josh continues to make Tiverton great one athlete at a time. He donates his time, energy, and knowledge to the boys and girls soccer and basketball teams. The young athletes in Tiverton are flourishing, including our own children, as a direct result of Josh's coaching. So it is with the utmost love, respect, and honor, and truly an honor, to introduce to you Tiverton's finest athlete and one of the 2018 Tiverton Hall of Fame inductees, Josh Del Deo. Thank you to the Hall of Fame committee for this honor and recognition, and congratulations to all the inductees. Any success that I had growing up is no doubt due to the influence and support of my parents. They were able to provide us with a great upbringing and family-oriented environment in which we were able to succeed. I grew up one of three boys, and our parents instilled in us at a young age the importance of family. My dad was an elementary school teacher in Fall River for 36 years, and we were lucky to have our mom home to raise us. Between coaching, driving us to games and practices, they were able to spend a lot of time with us. One of my fondest memories growing up was traveling with my family cross country two consecutive summers in a row for six weeks at a time. We did this in a van with no AC, no electronic distractions, and I remember one of our trips, the van clutch went. We were in the Badlands of South Dakota, and we were unable to shift out of first gear and had to drive about 40 miles to the nearest town. There, my dad got the parts. He slid under the van in an abandoned parking lot, and he fixed it himself. I remember getting under the van with him and that's where I learned how to fix a clutch on an 86 Dodge van. <laughs> I've never had to do that since. As you can imagine, that was a long, slow drive, but it was memorable. We have many memories of those trips that we still talk about today. My dad passed away last December, and his dedication and love for his family will never be forgotten. I don't think my parents missed a game or sporting event in all the years my brothers and I played. He would have loved to be here tonight. Elaine and I have three children of our own. My oldest son, Luke, is in his first year of high school. He's playing soccer for Tiverton this fall. He actually had a makeup game scheduled for tonight. And uh, earlier this week, I said, well, Luke, what do you want to do? Do you want to you go to your game? or?" Or do you want to come to your dad's Hall of Fame induction? He's like, Dad, I want to go to my game. <laughs> I would have said the same thing, buddy. I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of you. My daughter Jenna is in the sixth grade at Tiverton Middle School. 
and I'm lucky enough to be able to coach your competitive soccer team in town. And my youngest daughter, Eden, who is hopefully home asleep right now, will be turning a year old on the 23rd of this month. I am a proud father, and I owe it all to my beautiful wife, Elaine. Elaine is a kindergarten teacher at Fort Barton School. She has been a dedicated teacher in town for 19 years. We met at Tiverton High School and have been happily married for 17 years. I grew up in Tiverton and was introduced to athletics at a young age. When we weren't playing soccer, basketball, or baseball, my mom had us on the tennis court. She enjoyed playing tennis with us. Even now, when I bring my kids to play, she will come and watch. And she still gets on the court and we hit together. A few years back, my mom and younger brother Jonas were able to coach the girls' tennis team to a state championship for Tiverton. My older brother Ben and myself, being less than a year apart, got to be pretty good playing partners at a young age. We pushed each other on the tennis court right up through high school. Ben was the better tennis player, but I was able to compete with him because I was so competitive. I hated to lose especially to him. <laughs> when Ben entered high school, he was playing good tennis. He went out for the tennis team, and as a freshman, he beat everyone on the team to take the number one single spot, which he didn't give up until he graduated. I was pretty impressed by that. I have to take some credit, though, because I got him ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ben was all state by his junior year. After playing baseball for two years, I went out for the tennis team my junior year. I was able to work my way up to number two, and playing beside my brother was one of my best THS memories. That being said, my brother and I also played on the soccer field together. <coughs> Quick story. It's the 92 Division I soccer playoffs. We are playing Bristol in the semifinals. He probably knows where I'm going with this. <laughs> the score is 0-0, zero, zero, and the ball rolls out to me just outside the 18-yard box. I remember this like it was yesterday. I strike the ball, it deflects off an opposing player and into the goal. The place erupts, everybody's celebrating as we just scored the game-winning goal to advance to the state finals. Not quite. The linesman had his flag up. Number five for Tiverton is called offsides. Number five was my brother, Ben. <laughs> Can we show the video with that? <laughs> Just kidding. We do actually have a video of that. We show it to our kids and they laugh at us. That was one of my best high school goals. Thanks, thanks bro. <laughs> We went on to lose that game 3-1 to one after defeating that team earlier in the season. My brother scored the lone goal for Tiverton. I would just like to acknowledge that 92 Tiverton team as one of the best soccer teams Tiverton has had. We defeated a very good Portsmouth team the game prior, who was seated number two in the state <coughs> behind number one South Kingstown. South Kingstown went on to defeat Bristol in the final. My teammates and I had a choice before that season to stay in Division II or move up to Division I, and the team chose to move up. I feel we could have won in Division II, but we chose to compete in the top division, which shows the character of that team. It's the parents, teachers, coaches, and teammates that make an individual successful. Without their support, you do not have the success as a student or athlete. I was very fortunate to have teachers and coaches like Andy Anderson, who saw something in me as a sophomore to put me on the varsity, and coach Jerry Arquette, who I had as a teacher and a coach. I think we talked more about basketball in his class than in history. <laughs> and coach John Townsend, who was my soccer coach my senior year at THS, and then for three years at Rhode Island College. He is still involved in coaching and coaches my kids at camps and soccer clubs. But I had a great high school experience at Tiverton, and I thank all that had a part in making it such a fun time. Thank you for this honor.
saying. <laughs> we have uh, one individual tonight being inducted that unfortunately uh, could not be here. So I'm just going to say a few words about Stacy Santos. And we'll make sure that uh, Stacy gets all her, uh, her plaque and her recognition sent to her. Stacy was four years of soccer, four years of basketball, four years of volleyball. She was the captain of all those three sports in her senior year. She was outstanding in soccer, outstanding in basketball and volleyball. In basketball, she was a thousand point scorer, which is no easy thing to do. She was awarded the John Aguiar Memorial Trophy for Outstanding Female Athlete as a senior. And one of her coaches, Chris Messenger in soccer, basically said to me, she could play anywhere. She played in every position. She knew how to score goals, she knew how to set people up. Uh, she was a great defender. She was a coach's pleasure. So, unfortunately, Stacy couldn't be here this tonight to accept her award, so I thought I'd just say a couple of quick words about her. So, I would appreciate a nice round of applause for Stacy I'm also waiting on one more person to show up to be an introducer who is actually coaching the game right now. So I'm going to skip a spot here. I'm going to skip Audrey Sanford. Come back to Audrey. And I'd like to call up Ben Burgandy and Coach Jerry Aquat. like to take a minute. Uh, six years ago when a group of us got together to um, put together this Hall of Fame, uh, we envisioned, we, we hoped, um, we dreamt of nights like tonight. Um, I hope I got this right, Dr. Sankalini. I hope I got that good Irish name correct. Um, the thing I remember about Tiverton the most is uh, the families. And when I look around the room, um, that's what I see. I see great families. I see the support and the love and, the, and whatever is needed to make successful uh, young people. And um, that's Tiverton in my mind. That's what I remember. Um, when I was playing, when I was uh, coach, glad that I did because it gave him a chance to see and, and uh, understand what it was all about. Um, the sophomore year, uh, we weren't as fortunate. We, ne we didn't get there. And his junior year, we struggled. So I'm glad that I brought him up as a freshman and he got that opportunity to uh, see what it, w what it was like. As a sophomore, um, he decided, uh, I'd heard about this guy who was uh, running a um, training camp uh, in Fall River, fourth, fourth floor of a mill, an abandoned mill, um, right near Robinson's Supply Company. Uh, the guy's name was John Batello, and he was right out of a Rocky film. Uh, thought his name would be Mickey. 
Uh, but uh, um, Ben took to him, and he took to Ben. Um, his his, his uh, training facility included tractor tires, sand pits, uh, ropes, which they climbed, very little in terms of weights. He was a kickboxer, and uh, the I used to love to go to watch him work out. Watch, not work out, but watch. <laughs> and uh, Ben grew in terms of his strength, and um, in terms that gave him the confidence to become the player that he was. As a junior, uh, we struggled. Um, we won, I think, one game as a junior uh, in Division Two. Um, but Ben uh, was named to the first team All Division team. Um, so that tells you a little bit about um, his ability. There wasn't a coach uh, when asked for nominations for that first team who didn't support Ben uh, with, with uh, tremendous accolades. And um, that gave way to his senior year in which uh, I think, if you look at the Hall of Fame, so far, most of the people, except for Scott tonight, um, who I think you might have been like the first of the big men who could go inside and score and hit it from the perimeter that we had. Yeah, no three-point line. No three-point line. If there was, it would have been uh, something special. Uh, Benny was much the same way. Uh, had a drill in which we uh, mimicked some of the players in the NBA, we had uh, moves that we taught kids. Um, Benny's favorite was Sigma, and he started close to the basket and gradually moved further and further away from the basket uh, and became an excellent, excellent outside shooter. Um, in his senior year, we finished 15 and 3 in Division 2. We have beaten the quarterfinals of the division playoffs and then went to the state playoffs where um, we were the 11th seed in an open tournament in the first year in which that tournament was held. Um, Benny averaged around 25 points, double figures in terms of rebounds, 12, 13 rebounds every game. It's money in the bank. Um, we beat LaSalle, we beat uh, Hendrickin, who was seven-time defending state champions, and then we beat Central in double overtime at the Ryan Center um, on our way to the finals, which we uh, had the lead at halftime and lost uh, in the second half, but it was truly a memorable run and truly uh, um, an outpouring of support from the people of Tiverton. Uh, Benny uh, could score from inside, hit from the perimeter. Uh, he had two of the more memorable dunks in the history of, not that there were many in Tiverton. Uh, but um, in the Hendrickson game, First half, we were up by about 15, 16, and Gunner drove the lane, dished to Benny, who was coming out of the corner, and a two-hand slam along the baseline that uh, the Hendrickson coach I had recruited when I was at UMass Dartmouth, he looked over to my bench and he said, I didn't expect this. And uh, the following game at Central, in which he went straight down the middle, slammed one one-handed uh, and got undercut and um, they called the technical on the dunk which uh, kind of infuriated everybody but uh, we made it through it, made it through that game uh, and the thing I, I, I remember most about Ben is one, uh, his intelligence. Now he graduated 11th in his class uh, he's currently working one class away from your master's. Um, he's an engineer at Newark and uh, just tremendous, tremendous, uh, tremendously smart person and uh, his in intelligence uh, helped his game tremendously. He was also um, 
very humble. Uh, he never um, put his well-being in front of the teams. He was always uh, team first, me and him. Uh, was never a priority. And so it's great honor at this time to uh, bring on Ben Brandenburg Gandhi. So I'd like to begin by uh, thanking the committee for the selection. Uh, it's truly an honor to be the most recent graduate to be inducted alongside five decades of Tiburon's most committed athletes, coaches, teams, and supporters. Uh, I'd like to recognize all the fans that gave the games more life, all the coaches I've had teach me, and all the teammates I've had with me over the years. Uh, I want to specifically acknowledge Kenny Welchman, who can't be here tonight, um, but he was the only person in my graduating class who was the same uh, person to play all of uh, the same three sports to me during my time at Tiverton. Um, we were both part of some really bad teams together and some really good teams, but regardless of the sport or the day of the week, he was always playing like it was his last game of his life. And uh, I can say with confidence that he was the most influential teammate I've ever had. And um, I hope that he is able to be inducted into this Hall of Fame at some point. Um, I'd also like to especially thank my parents, uh, who went to every single game for every sport I ever played, and cheered as loud as you could. You always pushed me to step out of my comfort zone because you understood that in order to make a child the best they can be, you need not take away challenges, but add them until you find their interests and the limits of their ability. You taught me to embrace failure and to channel towards self-improvement and growth, and I wouldn't be the person I am today if it weren't for both of you, so I love you very much. Uh, I have to be honest, since I graduated in 2011, I have been really busy with life and I haven't really looked back to reflect on my high school year as much. But when Jim got in touch with me to let me know that I'd been inducted to the THS Hall of Fame, all the memories came flowing back really quickly. I remember the hype around all the, sc the school for the biggest games, uh, the daily grind of getting through sprints at the end of practice, and how packed house basketball games would make twice as much noise as the amount of people that were there. Uh, and I don't know if anyone's ever heard of, a song, heard of a song called Eye of the Tiger, but that was like an adrenaline shot to the heart and it always made you want to kick down the nearest door. <laughs> uh, as, much as, fun, as much fun as I had with uh, soccer and lacrosse, basketball was always my one true love. I'd loved it since I was a kid, growing up watching Paul Pierce and the Celtics. Uh, I remember when my parents took me to my first Celtics game, and I was just awestruck by the pace of the game and the atmosphere. And I knew that um, it was a game that I wanted to be around for the rest of my life. Uh, so before high school, I played on countless town teams, All-Stars, CYO, AAU, you name it. Uh, basketball summer camps were a yearly ritual for me, and I did everything to, I could to be around the game as much as possible. Uh, but none of this ever compared to my time wearing a Tigers uniform. There's something special about playing for Tiburon High School basketball, uh, because it was all about the underdog mentality, and we embraced it. Coach Arquette and Coach Landock created a blue-collar atmosphere, they understood that Tiburon was chronically undersized and lacked the talent pool the larger schools in the state had the luxury of having. To compensate, they emphasized teamwork, hustle, and defense, and everyone bought in. To this day, I've never met a guy that could energize and motivate a group of young men the way Coach Arquette could. I remember one day, practice before playoffs started my senior year, Coach had us running our daily suicide sprints. And uh, during the season, our practices were really long, sometimes three hours, and Coach Arquette would literally be yelling the entire time. Uh, and there was just never a time that it wasn't 100% intensity. So by the end of the, um, the de uh, suicide uh, session, and on the last suicide, he said, um, if everyone runs this last one hard, I'll run a sprint. So obviously everyone's really excited at this point because uh, they know justice is coming for Coach because he's been yelling the entire time. So he blows the whistle, and on that last sprint, that was the fastest one we run all year. And um, after we've done with this, we obviously made Coach hold up his end of the deal. And uh, so he's in one of his uh, patented full sweatsuits. He had uh, blue sweatpants and a navy blue zip-up sweatshirt. And this is a side Coach. I always thought that when you woke up for practice, practice in the morning, um, you had the closet and you opened it, and it would just be a bunch of uh, sweatsuits hanging up on the <laughs> Consistency. 
So um, we counted down and we yelled, go. And for someone that was contemplating retirement that year, he ran pretty damn fast. <laughs> and so everyone's yelling, let's go, coach, let's go, finish strong. So he gets to the last leg of the sprint, and he's coming full steam towards the finish like a derailed locomotive. And uh, I've never seen him run, so let, let alone this fast. So he gets just past half court, and then, oh no, he trips over his own feet. And his momentum takes his body, and he falls forward and slides five feet like he's on a slip and slide. And that was probably one of the best moments of practice I've ever had in my life. Uh, the atmosphere was no different for games either. On game days, we would all sit in the locker room during pregame. Uh, some of us joke around, others were serious, but once Coach uh, Arquette walked in and started pacing up and down the room, he had everyone's attention. Anytime we were playing a team that was bigger, faster, stronger, and more talented, he would always tell us, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the amount of fight in the dog. The team always rallied around that kind of mentality, and it was that mindset that propelled us so far during the Cinderella one we made in the Open Tournament in 2011. At the start of it, nobody thought we could win, uh, other than us. <coughs> So uh, we went on to beat LaSalle, and uh, after that game, Coach came out into the locker room and he said that wasn't an upset, we were a better team. Uh, he said the next one will be an upset. So we then go on, we play Bishop Hendrick in the next game. Um, me and Gunner, we fell out uh, after having like a 20 point lead in the start of the second half. And uh, Kenny Welchman made one of the most uh, memorable second half runs I've ever seen. He scored like maybe 15 points, 10 in the last minute, 30. And uh, we all stormed the court after we beat them, and that felt good. Um, so that was an upset. So these wins propelled us to the semifinals at URI against Central, the largest high school in Rhode Island. A few days before the semifinals, the coaches and captains were invited for a press conference at the Ryan Center. Um, during the conference, each coach got up, and they talked about the season and their upcoming opponent. And I remember when the Central coach got, it was his turn to get up, he, um, he wouldn't even acknowledge that we were his opponent. He didn't think we belonged in the same court as them, but we proved them wrong. We battled through a grueling double overtime game, and in the, um, front of the entire town of Tiverton, we came out on top again. Unfortunately, one night later, the run came to a painful end in the finals when we lost to St. Raphael's, losing the lead with two minutes to go and not being able to recover. After the game, I remember being so upset, but a reporter wanted to talk to me about the game. I told him we gave it everything, but I guess it just wasn't enough. He responded in a way that I'll always remember forever. He said, it was more than enough. One day you will look back on this moment and realize the magnitude of what you guys have done. Now that I've had a chance to reflect on these memories, I realize he was right. What we accomplished went beyond the game and beyond sports, because it's applicable to life. When people are comparing two different parties competing for the same goal, they make a comparison based on what they can see. Who is bigger, faster, stronger? who has more talent. The party that seems the lesser of the sum of these parts is considered the underdog, the party that has little chance to win. But there are intangibles the underdog has that cannot be parameterized. Grit, determination, competitiveness, poise, work ethic, the wounded animal mentality. Intangibles are what get the underdog to rise above adversity. They allow the smaller dog to win the fight. We prove that no matter how small you are and no matter how many, how many, how many people doubt you, Oftentimes, goals that seem impossible are, in fact, possible. We prove that by relentlessly pursuing an objective, your enthusiasm can move the community around you. It can inspire others to follow in your footsteps and pick up where you left off. To all the inductees here tonight, we, wouldn't, we didn't get here because we were the most talented in the world or because we were of the highest pedigree. We got here because we emphasized the intangibles, because we embraced being the underdog, and because we left an impact on the community so much so that even five decades later, people have not forgotten the contributions that you have made to the school's history. In closing, throughout life, there will often be times when you are considered the underdog, where you may appear to have little chance to come out on top. It's important to remember where you came from, and that even if your probability of winning is small, there is always still a chance. It's your intangibles, what's in your heart and in your mind, that will give you the greatest chance at perseverance and prosperity. Whether you're an underdog in a race, an immigrant leaving the only home you've ever known to pursue a better life, whether you're the underdog for an important job promotion at work, or you're in the fight for your life against a debilitating disease, embrace the challenge head on and come out on top. Win the race, achieve the American dream, become the CEO of your company, be the cancer survivor, and don't let anyone tell you you can't. Thank you again, and go Tigers.
Okay, Ben. Wow. Awesome. Okay, Audrey Sanford, 1995. Come up here, please. And Matt McGuire. Coach McGuire. So I'm up here tonight for, uh, for Ken Dias, who could not be here tonight, and he left me a short speech that I will read for you, and for you. Um, it says, first off, I would like to apologize to Audrey for not being here tonight. I am umpiring a Big East field hockey regular season championship at Liberty University. Um, and he's also thanking me for reading this for him, so that was very nice. <laughs> Audrey Sanford was the first field hockey player that I had I'd ever met at Tiverton High School. I was new to the sport, and she was my right-hand person, navigating me through this new world of field hockey. I had heard from everyone about her success in softball, but she was so much more than that. She was an incredible athlete, teammate, and individual. August 20th, 1994 was my first day back at Tiverton High School as the head field hockey coach. It was 6.30 a.m. when I pulled into the parking lot. Audrey was already there waiting, eager to go. I must admit now I was nervous. This was my first time coaching field hockey and I didn't know anything about the sport. I quickly learned that Audrey wasn't just a great athlete, but she was an unbelievable leader. I was her third field hockey coach in four years. As an athlete, it isn't, e it isn't an easy thing to adjust to, but she took it in stride. They spoke to her, uh, that spoke to her character. She never shied away from the problem or the obstacle. She attacked it the season head on and acted as a tremendous leader to her teammates along the way. As a program, we, we competed in Rhode Island's Division I, which is, <clears throat> which is a field with the top programs in the state. Audrey was my goalkeeper. There were games where she had double digit saves and shot, in, in shot attempts, which is a lot <clears throat> for a goalie to handle. Audrey never complained, always kept her head in the game, and, and for that, she was selected first team all division and second team all state. She was asked to compete in the Rhode Island Senior Showcase where Audrey recorded five shutouts. I couldn't have been more proud. Although I didn't have the honor of coaching Audrey in softball, I want to recognize her success there as well. She was one of the best softball players that Tiverton has ever seen. Through 1994 and 1995, Audrey was a two-time selection to the Rhode Island first team all division and first team all state selection in 1995. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. As a senior, Audrey was nominated to Rhode Island Scholar Athlete Games at URI. These were, the only, <coughs> these were only a few of her highlights in her softball career. I would, <coughs> I would let her know that her teammates and coaches would agree with me when I say it was an absolute honor to be around her and to coach her. After her time at Tiverton, Audrey attended UMass Dartmouth, where she was a dual athlete in both field hockey and softball. As a freshman, she started and played every minute of every game for the field hockey program. When spring came around, she pitched for, for, the, in the, uh, excuse me, for the courses in softball, sometimes pitching both double headers. If you want to find Audrey today, right here, um, you can find her chasing her, kid, her two boys around at various sporting events around town. They take after their mom with athleticism. And with that said, it is with great pleasure that I honor and induct Audrey Sanford to the Tiverton High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. I was much better on the field than I am at public speaking, but just want to say, Thank you, thank you uh, to Coach McGuire for doing the introduction. Um, I just want to thank Coach Phillips and Coach McKinnon for the time that they put in coaching my four years at the high school. Uh, I'd like to also thank Coach Dias for his time. Um, but mostly I'd like to thank my parents. Uh, it was the time they spent practicing in the backyard 
taken me to clinics and camps and all my games and my dad spending hours coaching. Um, that's what really got me here today. So I'd like to say thank you to them and congratulate all the rest of the inductees tonight. Audrey, uh, top of the list now. <laughs> well, we're going to get Matt McGuire up here. Where's, where'd Matt go to? Come on up here. Yeah, I'd like all of the girls from the 2000 field hockey team to come on up here and just kind of line up against the wall, back wall here. So, um, again, I would like to apologize for my absence this evening, and he's thanking me again for, uh, for being Coach Dias. Um, so I'm glad Coach Brown you're up here, because I really don't know half of you guys, but, um, and I'm definitely not Coach Dias, and I think you know that. The 2000 uh, field hockey team is one, if not the most successful team in the history of the field hockey program at Tiverton High School. This wasn't just because this group of girls recorded a 20 win and zero uh, loss record and won three consecutive Division II Rhode Island State Championships. Not because they outscored their opponents 104 goals to seven goals against. It was because they knew the true meaning of hard work, loyalty, and dedication. This is the team that laid the groundwork for, for four consecutive Division II championships, a 66 game win streak, and a Division I regular season title. The only title won by a girls team in the history of Tiverton Athletics. Although they might have not been there to receive those accolades, without this team, the Tiverton High School field hockey program would not have had, excuse me, have seen continued success. This would feature five, this team would feature five first team all state nominations and two second team all state nominations. 12 of the 14 players on the roster would be recognized as part of the Rhode Island field hockey all division teams. They would also have the league's top six scorers as part of our team. We were a powerhouse, a force to be reckoned with, sending multiple athletes to continue their field hockey careers at the collegiate level. Let's look back to 1999. It was the third game of the year. We had lost to Cranston East 3-2, despite outshooting our opponents 27-3. The next day, we practiced for over four hours. That must have stunk. <laughs> the girls put out, put out the work and didn't complain for a second. They leaned on each other, worked out the kinks, and for that game against Creston East, it would be the last, <coughs> excuse me, it would be the last game on the freshmen on my roster would lose during their hockey career at Tiverton. I could sit there and blind you with individual statistics who scored all the goals, which awards the girls received. But that is not what this team was about. Field hockey is a team sport. Everyone on the field must do their job in order for the team to be successful. This team did just that. If one player was off on a certain day, her teammates compensated and we achieved the outcome we wanted. I would like to thank each player for their hard work, their dedication, and their loyalty to the program. It was an honor to coach all of you, and these memories will last a lifetime. Lastly, I would like to thank my, co my assistant coach, Ellie Byrne, for all of her help and dedication. Congratulations, girls. This is long overdue and well-deserved. It is with great pleasure that I now induct the 2000 field hockey team to the Tiverton High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Okay, want to introduce the girls? Sure, thank you. And as, after you're introduced, just slide over and Matt will give you. Okay, 
Okay, now let's see how, let's see how good my memory is. Uh, Kristen Pimento Riddle. <laughs> Michelle's. No. Nope. Mimi. Melissa. One of the Melissas. I know the last name is Kamara. Uh, the other Melissa, who I constantly called Michelle because of her aunt. Jen Williams. Dan Bavaris. Um, uh, Bethany with the same last name. Melissa. Lindsay, Sousa, 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 Sousa. <laughs> and Sarah Forrest. <laughs> That's only half of the team. <laughs> So all the uh, young girls out there that are like 6, 8, and 10 years old, 12 years old that want to play field hockey, we've got about 8 extra trophies and awards over here. Can you come up now and get them and then play for the high school later. Deal? To have Frank Raposa and Bobby Murray come up here, please. because I don't think there's another family in the community that has been involved in athletics as long as your family. Um, I came in 1976, and you guys are already deeply buried in the program. You've got the Athletic Booster Club going. He had worked to revive it in a minute ago. Lorraine had become a, a member of the school committee. Um, and you guys, along with, I don't know how you guys did it, 11 kids, that all went through our school system, that all were extremely successful with our athletic program. And the boys, it was like, the boys used to say to me all the time, no, we're gonna wear the same number. And when I got to Jay, I said, Jay, you're not wearing the same number. I'm tired of the reposers wearing the same darn number. I'm changing the number. But the, the thing that I think I, I wanna go back to the most is when we won one of our first, maybe state championships, a league championship, Carl, Carl Sanderson and your wife, came into school and we had this pep rally, which was was, un, was unheard of. And they came in with placard cards. And I want to remember they say that it was Petter Day. And there are two of those letters that I can truly remember. One of them was the, was, it was a, there was a, a P and it was the pride. And I can remember Carl walking around the gym. Now there was 975 of us in the building at the time. You know, and I was just a kid. I mean, I was might be 26, 27 years old. And the, the joint just jumped. The school was just full of life, and they went through the talking of the values of why we were who we were. And all I can remember is this is what your wife was. This is what she represented. And she did it with her family, and her family came into the school, and they represented the same values. 
and they permeated throughout the entire system. And as a result, what happened is every time we won a state championship, the kids knew we were going to have pet a day. And Carl and she would come in and she would do us. It's kind of like Mrs. Black kind of picked that up afterwards. You know, it, 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 it's kind of so you'll get an idea of what Lorraine was. It's, it's, it's to a degree, it's kind of what Mrs. Black does now for our kids today. But when they were finished, they said, because you've done what you've done, it's a half day of school, you can go home. Well, what that did was light the place on fire because it was unheard of that we were going to go home from school after winning the championship. And what it did is it made kids want to be more involved in what we did and wanted us to be more successful at it because there was always someone that said to them, we respect you for what you did. And as a result, Mrs. Raposa, even when she left us, was always with us. So years go by and I said, you know what, we need to, we need to do something. So we decided we were going to name a trophy after Lorraine and recognize a kid in her memory. And the one thing that it wasn't so much the trophy and the recognition is what you did. Frank would come, now, even with Lorraine being born, he would come and he would give a scholarship to each of these kids. And he never had to do that. It was never asked. It was never, and it was a reflection of who the Raposa family was. And to this day, to the day I go to my grave, I will always remember you and your wife for what they did for our school system. And I won't say our athletic program, but for our school system, because Lorraine was, she worked on her athletics, she worked on her academics, and she fought for anything that related to the positive improvement for kids in our school system. And you're here to be able to stand here and, and, and receive what I wish she was here. And I know she is. Ellie tells me all the time, Mom is always here. Okay, but what your family has done for our community, I don't think any other family has ever done before. And all I can say from the depth of my heart is thank you to you, thank you to your wife, thank you to those 11 kids that now must have about 50 or 60, what do you have, 60 <laughs> grandchildren, great grandchildren? And just say how important the Raposa family is to the town of Tiverton and to the athletic program and our school. So Frank, thank you very much. And Elaine, wherever you are, we're all saying thank you for what you've done. a hotel on Evans Avenue. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tiffany was in the midst of school building times. And uh, I can remember, oh boy, the fact that a family was coming into town with 11 children was going to be an awful impact on the school budget. <laughs> so we decided we're going to do something about it. And we got involved. And I say to every one of you, get involved. You can excuse me a minute. But we did. And that fall, the Boosters Club had become, I hate to say it, defunct because they had won all kind of state championships. There was no more interest. The, the party and the big banquets, everything was over with. And let me see if I can remember the names. The clocks, the lakes, the towers, uh, the reposes. We decided at a, a, a kind of a private meeting at the high school library, we each took $10 out of our pocket to buy stamps, envelopes, and some paper for the mimeograph machine. No copy machine in those days, mimeograph machine. And that's how the Boosters Club got started again. And boy, did we have some parties at that house. 
tag days, shake a can day. But we raised enough money to get the thing going again. And here it is. Here it is. So, uh, <laughs> there's an awful lot of the people that are here tonight after school played football, touch football, dodge ball, you name it, in that yard that's adjacent to that house. All good memories, good times. And uh, you never worry about, not a lot of people worry about their taxes. Oh, taxes are so high. I say my tax bill is my ticket to live in too. That's what it should be. If you don't want to live in Tiverton and the taxes are too high, don't buy the ticket. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Education and sports go hand in hand, and I'll tell you, you'll get a lot of wonderful people. Uh, I see now, I look at, Jimmy, we tried our best to beat you in, in sports, you know that. But hey, you beat us, so you won. That's what it was all about. I see Dr. Smith here. Whew. He had his chance at my body. <laughs> and he did a good job. Yeah. I, I, they thought I was crazy having both knees done at the same time. He said, don't worry about it. In the hospital, 13 days, I walked out of there. Yeah. Thank you, Dick. <laughs> Frank, so. I won't tell you what kind of doctor the other Dr. Smith is. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> 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 he knows what he does, too. But anyway, it's, it's been my pleasure tonight to receive this award and to congratulate all of When I see these young athletes, what they've done, for the town of Tiverton, the recognition, all state, girls and boys. I'll tell you another little, uh, I know you're, you're in the mood for laughing and I won't continue too much longer. I had an uncle, an old bachelor, he came to the house one day and he was out on that deck overlooking that big field where the kids all played. And he said, well, you know, Lorraine Frank should plow that all up and have a garden there. Don't send the girls to college. You do not educate girls. <laughs> Whew, she almost threw him off the porch. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. How times change and how the thinking change. But hey, some of those Reposa Scholarship Awards went to young girls and I said to myself, he got his, <laughs> he got his answer. <laughs> so with that said, I enjoy this evening and uh, there's an awful group of my, not awful, a good group of my family <laughs> is here tonight. So I say thank you. Thank you for the town of Tiverton and thank you for all of the teachers and coaches that have done such a good job with our young people. Thank you and good night. God bless you.